Hey guys, it's Chris and Jazz. And this is our Moving to Costa Rica update series finale. It's Chris and Jazz, and on our channel, Blogging Money Life, we teach creators like you how to leave your day job so you can live life on your own terms. So we did it. After an entire year of planning, preparation, selling nearly everything we own, we finally did it. We have moved to Costa Rica. And now that the move is behind us, this marks the end of our Moving to Costa Rica update series. But we are not saying adios to sharing our Costa Rica story. We have a whole new journey ahead of us and a new series on its way. But before we tell you the name of the series, and everything is going to be about, let's get you caught up on everything we've been up to this past month. So it's been another busy month. Uh, we started the month out in Austin, Texas. We stayed with uh, Jazz's sister and my brother-in-law. We spent two weeks with them. And, uh, you know, we gotta say it was a good time. It was a really good time. Not only did we get to spend time with um, like my sister and our brother-in-law, but our niece. And um, since we, you know, were living in San Antonio, we didn't get to see her as often because it's about an hour and a half away from where we used to live. Yeah, so we got to spend two weeks of quality time with her. Another cool part about spending time with family in Austin is uh, my sister Jan. She didn't live that far away from where we were living. Yeah, she was like a 15 minute drive. Right, and she's also the one who's watching our cat. So we got to spend quality time with her as well as our fur babies uh, before we left. While we were in Austin, we also got to spend time with some of our friends there who just had a new baby and uh, we got to meet her for the first time, which was great because we weren't sure who we'd be able to before we, we moved. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really special, being able to see them and, and meet their little one. Yeah, and it's, it's always a good time with this particular couple. Um, when we hang out with them, we can always expect uh, good food, uh, good wine, and excellent conversation. Yep, and so, they did not disappoint. <laughs> yeah, they sure did. So when our two weeks in Austin was up, it was time to call an Uber and head to the airport. And when this guy pulled up, you should have seen his face <laughs> when he uh, when he seen us waiting there at the end of the driveway with 13 bags. Yeah, a lot of luggage, and some of the mini bags were over 50 pounds too. So. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. But somehow he ended up packing like everything into the trunk of that SUV. Yeah. And we still had plenty of room in the center row for Jack and I. So we made it to the airport. Everything went smoothly there as far as like our flights. And we finally arrived in Costa Rica. Uh, we had booked a hotel for a stay in San Jose for that night since we got in pretty late. And we still had a four hour drive ahead of us to our final destination of Uvita. We checked into Hotel Mango and when Janice had booked the room over the phone, they had told her one price. And uh, when we were checking in, they're asking me to pay and they had given me a different price. Right, a higher price. A higher price. So that was our first experience with gringo pricing. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you who don't know what gringo pricing is, um, I, it's when um, the locals see uh, Americans coming in, they think they think we have a little bit more money, and uh, the prices may just happen to go up, and so it went up for us by ten dollars. The hotel was also interesting because it wasn't very far from the uh, airport. airport. Yeah, not at all. Like it was literally at the end of the tarmac. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were saying to sleep with the sweet sounds of airplanes taking off and landing all night. All right. And, but you know. You know, that, that was all right because uh, our morning wake up was just as pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was also on like maybe 20 foot off a major highway and uh, our wake up call was from big rig semi trucks tapering <laughs> in <laughs> town. So yeah. it was a comfortable stay. Pretty hotel, and uh, yeah. They had a great breakfast, though. They had a great breakfast. Yeah, they yeah. had a traditional Costa Rican breakfast, so we could walk right out and then get breakfast, and that part was cool. It was a really pretty hotel. Not the best location, though. Yeah, agreed. Our taxi driver showed up right on time, and 
we yelled to slow up our stuff and we took off. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was a four hour ride, but it didn't seem like four hours. No, not at all. Just because the scenery was beautiful. Yeah. And we actually had a pit stop to get some lunch in um, a town called... Playa Hermosa. Yep, Playa Hermosa. Probably about an hour and a half north of where we were ultimately going to, to end. Right. Um, and it was gorgeous. So about an hour and a half after our lunch at Playa Hermosa, we finally arrived in Vita and moved into our container home. Walked in, it was nice and cool, it had air conditioning. Uh, it was set up really cute. The decorations I thought were really adorable. Um, and it was fully furnished, so we didn't have to worry about um, having a bed or kitchen appliances or things like that. All of that was already there, uh, which was nice. So we'll actually um, release another video here in the next couple of days or so and just give you a full tour of our first place in, in Ubica. Yeah. So the next morning we met with our relocation consultant at a local coffee shop. We, we arrived and she was already there with um, uh, another expat, Jerry. They showed us around Uvita. Yeah, Augustine is her name. Um, she's a representative from Sarah Elena's Consulting Service, which we talked about before. And um, it was a really good day. We learned this town of Uvita, I can't even call it a city because it's really small and I loved it from the, the first day. She really took her time to show us where all the banks were, uh, the ATM, grocery stores, there's two grocery stores here. She made a long list of recommendations for restaurants and sodas to check out. Um, oh, most importantly, she uh, set up our cell phones. Oh yeah, that yeah. was pretty important for sure. And she also showed us some fun things too, like there's a bamboo forest that is within walking distance as well as a, a Ubita River, nice clear water and the waterfall is there and there's also a beach yeah. that is within driving distance too. Maybe a five minute drive for us to get there and it is beautiful. Yep. Oh, and on the way home, she took us by the farmer's market that mm -hmm. happens to be like directly behind our house. So right. That was super cool. So while we were meeting with Augustina, we mentioned to her that we needed a little bit of a bigger place. Our container home was nice and cozy, but we knew we were going to be in trouble once our shipping container of stuff arrives. So uh, she actually recommended um, another expat to us who was interested in um, getting her current place rented out because she was moving. Her name is Trudy and um, we got a chance to go over to her place and check it out to see if it would be a good fit for us. Yeah, so it was super cool meeting Trudy. Um, we got there, she showed us around her place, super nice, nice place, but within the first 10 minutes we knew it wasn't going to fit because of all the stuff we got coming from our shipping container. But, you know, we let her know and even after that we still spent probably three hours talking with Trudy. Yeah. And so it, it, man, it's she's just, just really cool. She's really cool. Really cool lady and um, super helpful too. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, she, so after we let her know it wasn't going to work, she, she's like, well, you know, this is how I found my place and I uh, kind of got a system in place and why don't you check out this guy Chris and his wife Jess. They got three casitas uh, nearby and they might be a good fit for you. We followed up on Trudy's lead and contacted Chris and Jess. Yeah, so we went in to look at a, a place to possibly rent and it resulted in us meeting some really cool people and hopefully, you know, some friends over here. So about halfway into our first week in Uvita, we realized that it's my birthday. <laughs> well, I, I think Jazz knew the whole time, but, you know, so much going on, I kind of forgot. But, uh, yeah, so my birthday was August 10th, and uh, we, we got up early and started heading towards the beach. Yeah, I got a nice nap yeah. <laughs> on the beach. Yep, and while Jazz was napping, I was getting yelled at by the lifeguard for hanging out in the rip time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm glad he told me. So after the beach, I think we probably went out for lunch, but um, we had to head home early to work on blog stuff. And uh, we spent the rest of the day preparing for our launch, our Blogging Money Life blog launch. While we were preparing for our launch, we had a power outage. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Now, uh, we had a couple of power outages uh, since we've been here, and they never last that long. I don't know if I consider them power outages. Like, the power literally just goes out, like, maybe twice a day for a split second. Yeah. yeah so, not not, nothing, nothing that interrupts what we're doing by any means. But this time, the power did not come back on. <laughs> oh. um, for several hours. Yeah, I think it went out at like <laughs> four and it didn't come on until 11. Yeah. We started asking around and uh, looking on Facebook and we had found out that there was a, a tree that fell down on one of the power lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was Chris and Jess were the ones that told us like, hey, this is not normal. Uh, <laughs> we've been here, we've been here uh, three plus years or so and we've never experienced a power outage longer than 15, 20 minutes. Um, if there's a tree down, it's it's probably gonna take some time to come back up. Right. And it did, it took time. Yeah, but it was pretty reassuring knowing that this was not a regular occurrence. Right. Um, yeah. From hearing that from other American Xbox too, which was nice. So something else that we've been up to since we've been here is trying out a lot of really good restaurants. Um, I know that we talked about Augustina showing us some really good places to go to as well as recommending some dishes to us and we definitely took her up from her offer to try out the places, especially the ones that were within walking distance from us. So we've been eating pretty good. Yeah. One of the cool things they have here are little eateries called sodas and what a soda is, it's essentially like a, like a, a miniature mom and pop restaurant that's outside someone's house, uh, which is really cool. It's traditional Costa Rican food. It's typically about half the price of going out to a, a normal restaurant. So you can probably get an entree for like five to seven dollars at a soda, where an entree at a, a typical restaurant would be like 10 to 15. 15. Yeah. yeah. So, and they're really good, really good food. We've gone to sodas for so far, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, we have, man, yeah. that's crazy. So one of the other places that Augustina recommended to us was um, the Uvita Beer Garden. She said on Friday nights they have live music and that we should definitely check it out. So Friday night comes and we head to the beer garden. It was really cool, we get there. First thing we notice is there's a band out there playing uh, 90s alternative music. They're singing in English. Uh, some of the songs are in Spanish, but you know, it was a real familiar feel. I noticed like everyone there just, they seem like they're all from different countries, not just Costa Rica, but from all over the world. Yeah, for sure. I told Chris like, if I woke up in this place, I would have no idea where in the world I was. <laughs> right. So yeah, we sat down and um, we met the owner, Jason. He was a super cool guy and he was, He's real nice at first, and then uh, we told him that, hey man, we just moved here, and he became even nicer. <laughs> so, yeah. Funny story, um, I get up to use the restroom, and uh, the, the restrooms are like these sliding pocket doors, and uh, the door was completely open when I got up to use the restroom, so I just seen the opening, and I walk right in, close the door behind me, um, you know, do my thing, wash my hands, start heading out and when I open the door there's a there's a girl standing right there like waiting for me to come out and uh, it was Augustina our, our <laughs> consultant and I'm like I just use the girls restroom big time <laughs> but yeah oh so she was there that was cool to see her there um, she introduced us to her husband and uh, then they invited us to sit with them and their friends mm -hmm. so we made three new friends that night. Yeah, and it was nice. We ended our night, they gave us a ride home to our place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, really nice. Everyone there um, that we met were expats as well, uh, from all over the place. Yeah. So, uh, just really cool. And also cool to hear other people's stories and what motivated them to move to Costa Rica as well. Oh yeah, yep. So that's it. That brings us to today, as far as everything that we've done since the last time we've talked to you guys. 
on our move to Costa Rica. Now, as we mentioned, this is the end of our moving to Costa Rica series because we moved, we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, but we still have so much that we want to explore and so many things that we want to share with you guys. Um, so we are going to continue on with the new series where we show you what it's like every day living in Costa Rica as expats. So in this series, we plan to bring you along on all our adventures from zip lining to hiking up active volcanoes to swimming in waterfalls, soaking in hot springs, and you know, just about anything you find on the brochure, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try. Yeah, and trying to go to different cities, as well as update you guys on the process with our residency. Oh yeah, yeah, forgot about that. <laughs> I should check on that. <laughs> so in honor of the Costa Rica model Pura Vida, we decided to call our series Live in La Pura Vida. And uh, shout out to our good friend Erica De Leon who suggested um, naming the series. So Pura Vida is Spanish for pure life and the motto encourages people to appreciate the simple treasures of life and you know, kind of take life as it comes and at your own pace. That's right. And our new Live in La Pura Vida is something we're going to update you guys on every single month. So make sure you subscribe so you can get the latest updates. And be sure to tune in next month because we've moved and we can't wait to show you guys around our new place. And for those of you who are just joining us on our journey, um, be sure to check out our full series, Moving to Costa Rica, in the description below so you can start from the beginning and see how we got to where we are now. So that's it. Don't forget to subscribe for new Blogging Money Life videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for watching.